Hello, in this video we're going to do a very quick demonstration of the seven basic exponent rules, but we're not going to do fractional exponents, so no square roots or cube roots or anything like that. First thing we have is the product rule. If you have x cubed times x squared, what would you expect the answer to be? Now, we're going to actually demonstrate why these rules are the way they are. So we're going to actually do this manually, but at the very end we're going to show you all the rules in a recap. If you have x cubed, that's x times x times x. But if you have x squared, that's x times x. So what's the final answer? You have x times itself five times. x to the fifth. So please notice that 3 plus 2 is 5. Next we have the power to a power rule. And in the power to a power rule, you actually have uh, something already raised to a power, such as y squared, but then this is being multiplied by itself three times. So y squared times y squared times y squared. So the final answer is you're going to use the, the product rule to do 2 plus 2 plus 2. y squared times y squared times y squared. You're going to add 2 together three times. You end up with y to the sixth. Now if you get back to the original problem, we really just multiplied 2 times 3 instead of repeated addition. The third example involves the product rule product to a power rule, I should say. And in this case, we have this entire quantity and it's being squared. Please don't use the distributive uh, property rule. The distributive property does not apply here. You cannot distribute an exponent. What I tell people is the exponent is applied to all parts of the product. We have a 3 times x times x to the fourth. So when we think about what happens, we're going to have a 3xy to the fourth times itself, 3xy to the fourth. That's the definition of being squared. We have this thing, which is being multiplied by itself. And now we're going to invoke the various other rules. One of the first things we can do is invoke our commutative property of multiplication, which says that three, the two threes are going to be put next to each other. I'm just going to put a little squared there. The two x's can be written next to each other. I'm going to write a squared there. And then the two y to the fourths can be written next to each other. I can write y to the fourth quantity squared. So what's our final answer? Well, 3 squared is 9. x squared is x squared. And y to the fourth quantity squared, we're going to use the power to a power rule. That is y to the eighth. And that's our final answer. Now let's do a couple examples that apply these rules. Don't forget to use your order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Shaniqua. There are th only four steps in the order of operations. It's not, six, not, to, it's not a six-step rule. Please excuse my dear Aunt Shaniqua. So we do parentheses, then we do exponents, then we do multiplication. So here we see a multiplication, but we also see an exponent. So we have to do the exponent first. So the first step of solving this is just to rewrite 2x squared, but now we're going to multiply this by the product, or I'm sorry, the square of 5x cubed. So what's 5x cubed quantity squared? Well, that's 5 squared, which is 25, and then it's x cubed squared, which is x to the sixth. And now we could just multiply this straight across. 2 times 25 is 50. x squared times x to the sixth is x to the Eighth. Remember, with the product rule, we add the exponents. So our final answer is 50x to the eighth. In our next example, we have a product, but the product is being squared. Now again, remember our order of operations. Here is a multiplication. Here is an exponent. You may say, we'll do the exponent first, but there's a gotcha. We actually have parentheses. And according to the order of operations, parentheses comes before everything else. So the parentheses says to do the multiplication first. So we're going to do the multiplication first. 4x squared times 3x to the fourth is simply 12x to the sixth. Again, 4 times 3 is 12. x squared times x to the fourth, 2 plus 4 is 6. But now we have to put this in parentheses because we have not yet squared anything. And now we're going to square the whole thing. And again, using the product to a power rule, 12 is getting squared. That gives us 144. And x to the sixth is being squared. 
That gives us x to the 12th. Remember, pr uh, power to a power, it is x to the 6 to the 2, 6 times 2. Our final answer is 144x to the 12th. Let's go on with a couple more rules. Oh, if we go back here, we can actually say that this was rule 1, this is rule 2, this is rule 3. The numbers aren't important. I just want to make sure we're keeping track of where we are. So this will be rule 4. The next will be rule 5. Here we have a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule. Now, I'm going to, just for the sake of illustrating this, I'm going to write it out longhand. I do not recommend that you do this on a test paper or a, a homework paper. I just want to show you where the rule comes from. So x to the fifth is defined as x times itself five times. And now this is all over x squared, which is x times itself twice. And now what we're going to do is we are going to start canceling out some things. We can cancel out an x, cancel out an x, cancel out another x, cancel out another x. And what are we left with? What we are left with is x cubed over nothing, or x cubed over 1, which is just x cubed. So if we return to the original problem, I have a 5 in the numerator, and 5 is the exponent in the numerator, and a 2 is an exponent in the denominator. Where did the 3 come from? That was actually 5 minus 2. That's where that 3 comes from. So when you have x to the fifth over x squared, it's just x to the 5 minus 2, which in this case was x cubed. Let's take a look at our fifth rule. This is a quotient raised to a power. Now again, if you see parentheses, you're supposed to do what's in the parentheses, but you can't really do anything with y cubed over x to the fourth. But what we can do is we can actually apply the uh, something to a power rule. The, in this case, it's a quotient to a power rule. So what we can actually do is, is um, do the definition of squaring, which is y cubed over x to the fourth times itself. y cubed over x to the fourth. That's what it means to square something. All right. So when we multiply this by itself, then you should remember from your fraction rules that you learned in, in fourth grade that you just multiply straight across. So we get one fraction. But the numerator is y cubed times y cubed. That's our product rule again. That's going to be y to the sixth. And the denominator, x to the fourth times x to the fourth, is x to the eighth. That's again the product rule. Now you may say, well, where did 6 and 8 come from? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. In other words, it was just like power to a power. y cubed raised to the second power. x to the fourth raised to the second power. Next, we have an interesting situation. So I'm going to ignore y to the 0 for now, and I'm just going to make up a problem. Let's say you were asked to find what's y squared over y squared. Well, one person might say, well, uh, um, I'm just going to write it out longhand, y times y over y times y, and then everything cancels out. These divide out, and these divide out, and we're left with 1. You know, something, anything over itself is 1. Another person might say, well, y squared over y squared is really, we're going to use the rule number four, which was our quotient rule. And in our qu quotient rule, we div uh, I'm sorry, when we divided powers, we were supposed to subtract the exponents. So this is really y to the 2 minus 2 power. The 2 minus 2 power. So this is really y to the 0. So you end up with y to the 0 really meaning 1. And you could do this with any other exponent or any other um, set of variables or even constants. Anything raised to the 0 power is actually 1. And that was rule 6. And then lastly, we have rule 7. And in rule 7, we're going to look at a negative exponent. Now again, let's just pretend we're not looking at that. Let's pretend we're looking at a different problem. Let's say you were asked to find x cubed over x to the fourth. Well, if you wanted to do it the longhand way, you would write x times itself three times over x times itself four times. And then you would say, well, what cancels out? Well, I've got one x cancels out in the numerator and denominator, an x cancels out in the numerator and denominator, and a third x cancels out in the numerator and denominator. 
and I'm left with not x, there is a fraction bar here. The numerator is 1. What was left? x in the denominator. The only thing that was left over was x in the denominator. So another way of writing this would be to say x cubed over x to the fourth. Let's invoke our quotient rule. Remember our quotient rule over here in rule 4? We, in this case, we subtracted 5 minus 2. You take the numerator's exponent and you subtract the denominator's exponent. So I'm going to take 3 and I'm going to subtract 4. x to the 3 minus 4 power. x to the 3 minus 4. What does this mean? x to the negative 1. So now we see that x to the negative 1 is really the same thing as 1 over x. These two things are equal. All right. Lastly, we're going to do an example. Now the thing about these fraction parts is you can mess with them lots of different ways. You can use your fraction rules from fourth grade. For example, 3 sixths is better known as 1 half. Sometimes it's good to write a, a fraction bar and then just start writing what you know. Um, another thing I like to do is get rid of any zero exponents. So for example, x to the 0 is just 1. So if you want to, you can type, do it times 1 down there. Uh, you can also invoke your quotient rule. Now right now, I don't have any other x's. I just have x to the fourth in this numerator. right? Um, you can do lots of different things. One thing that I like to do is I like to just take anything with a negative exponent and just move it. So this y to the negative 2 becomes y squared down in the denominator. And this z squared stays z squared in the numerator. So now getting down to the denominator, I have a y to the fifth, which didn't go anywhere, and I still have that z to the seventh. So I, I'm only simplifying just a little bit at a time. I'm not going to get the final answer right away. So I've got a y squared times y to the fifth in the denominator. That's going to end up with a y to the seventh. Don't forget the 2. And now I have this x to the 4th in the numerator. That's not going anywhere. But now the next thing I want to take a look at, and I'll do this in, uh, in orange, I've got a z squared over a z to the 7th. Now there's two ways of doing this. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So I could either write a z to the negative 5, but I'm not going to do that. z to the negative 5 doesn't belong in the numerator. I'm actually going to right z to the fifth in the denominator, z to the fifth. So actually my final answer is x to the fourth over the quantity 2y to the seventh, z to the fifth. Now let's recap all of our rules. Let's use uh, blue this time. x to the a times x to the b, remember what we do when we have the product rule? We add the exponents x to the a plus b. How about when we have power to a power? x to the a to the b, the quantity to the b. That would be x to the a times b, better known as x to the ab. How about product to a power? Product to a power, remember, we apply that exponent. We're going to get x to the a times y to the a. Next, we have the quotient rule. Remember in the quotient rule, if you have the same base, you just subtract the exponents. This is going to be x to the quantity a minus b. x to the a minus b. Next, we have a quotient to a power. I hope you remember, we just applied that exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. So this would be x to the a all over y to the a. And lastly, our, our two favorite rules, anything, and I mean Anything raised to the zero power is one, always. Next is a negative exponent. Remember, with a negative exponent, you actually just send it downstairs, what I call downstairs, which is the denominator. So this would actually be a one over x to the a. Notice that a is now a positive number before it was a negative number. And that's a recap of the seven rules. Hope you enjoyed it.